Okay, so the production possibility curve, the PPC, uh, and if you start off with this definition, how the PPC shows the maximum combination of goods um, that can, sorry, be produced from a given amount of resources and technology. When we talk about combination of goods, understand if you look at the sample PPC, let any particular point on the PPC uh, shows, you know, a particular quantity that you can produce of Y, particular quantity of X, and say is, is true with other uh, points as well, unless of course you're producing here or here, where you're either reproducing all of Y or all of X. Um, but the idea is it just shows all of these combinations. And the keyword here is that can, uh, that can be produced. Uh, I know the B is in the way a bit, but the idea is when you talk about can, like what could possibly be, what could possibly happen, what, you know, the, the combinations that you could possibly produce, it doesn't mean that you actually would be able to produce that. And if you look at this and really understand what the PPC uh, shows through the sample PPC that I've drawn right here, um, all these points on the PPC are perfectly efficient points. They are points that show that there is no wasted of resources, there's full employment of resources, and this is where you, the maximum amount that you could have done, done what you could have produced, you have produced. So you are operating at your, you know, uh, on your potential, at your potential, whatever is grammatically correct, right? So, you know, if you look at points A, B, C, D, you know, these are on the PPC. So these are, like, you know, operating at potential full employment of resources. So hey, the idea is, however, that in reality, your actual point, uh, which I denoted by point E, but it could really be any particular point inside the PPC. Uh, so, so your actual points usually are within the PPC. Why? Because uh, there usually exists uh, under employment of resources. I mean, when you talk about full employment and underemployment, we're not just talking about labor, but just like really any particular resource or factor of production, um, land, uh, labor, capital, blah, 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 all, all of that, right? So, um, yeah, so any point within the PPC is, an, you, you would call uh, normally well, points within the PPC, one of those would be the actual point where your either firm or economy or whatever you're drawing the PPC for would actually be producing because there would be some amount of wastage of resources because perfect efficiency is difficult to achieve, um, what do you call it, uh, in the real world. Um, point F is interesting. Point F is an, your unattainable point because what we're saying is that if you know, you're perfectly efficient, if you really make use of all of the resources you have, you can operate on the frontier. You can be, you know, any point here. Reality may, you'd probably be some point inside. However, you could do whatever, but with the given amount of resources and technology, you could be 100% efficient, but you'll never reach points outside the PPC. Those are unattainable points. You know, it's because it's outside the PPC. So uh, these unattainable points could become attainable in the future, if your uh, uh, amount of resources and technology changes, and we will we'll look at ways you can shift your PPC. However, um, at the time being, you can call them unattainable points, points that even if you are 100% efficient, you cannot uh, operate at or on. Okay, so an interesting analogy that I once heard from a teacher uh, that I really liked was linking your PPC to your O-level economics grades, right? So um, there is this guy, let's call him Abdullah. Um, he, if he studies, you know, he has a month left. If he like doesn't waste any time, he studies, he's, you know, efficiently, he doesn't wa waste his time and, you know, bahut sahi padhai karta hai, then he can operate on the PPC, he can get an A, right? That is his potential. 
uh, but just because he can possibly get an A doesn't mean he's actually going to get an A. In reality, he may be wasting time and hence be some point inside the PPC. So in while if he was 100% efficient, he could have gotten the A. However, in reality, he might be getting Bs or Cs. And then there's a point outside, an unattainable point of an A star. With his amount of aptitude and so on, there's just no way possible that even if he's 100% efficient, he can possibly get an A star. Um, for that, he'd have to shift his PPC. Um, I don't know what the analogy for that would be. Maybe joining a better school or something of that sort. Right? So, but that's but it's very crucial to understand the difference between what is what you could potentially produce or potentially achieve and what you actually do achieve in the real world. Um, there are a few ways the PPC um, is used to test you. Uh, there are two major ways. So I'll, I'll just go to the first one. Um, so the first thing that you guys should know relevant to the PPC that will help you answer these questions are, you know, uh, PPC showing uh, economic concepts. So there are lots, a ton of economic concepts you can show using the PPC. I'll just be looking at a few major ones. Um, the first right off the bat is scarcity. What was scarcity? The pres the you know, the presence of unlimited wants, but limited resources. So you might uh, have infinite wants, but you can't really satisfy all of those wants, right? And the idea here is what, if you look at it, uh, scarcity is shown through this, through the frontier, through the, this particular line, right? Um, of the PPC, because it shows that if you are 100% efficient, you can potentially produce on points A, B, C, D, etc., etc., all on the, the frontier. However, you cannot go to unattainable points. You cannot produce here. You cannot produce here. You cannot operate here. And why? Because you have a given set of resources, uh, limited resources. Your, your wants could be infinite. Your wants could be. You you might want to operate here. It doesn't mean you'll actually get it, right? So. That's the idea. Uh, so once are infinite, you might want, you might desire to operate outside the PPC, but because of limited resources, you cannot. You can at the very max, if you're hundred percent efficient, operate on the PPC. That shows scarcity. The second thing we can show is choice. Uh, so basically, where you're choosing between uh, uh, infinite combinations of output. So even if let's assume you're, okay, let's say you're perfectly efficient and you're on the PPC, even then you'd have to choose, should I produce at A, should I produce at B, which will give me a different combination of Y and X. Should I produce at C, should I produce at D, and basically should I, there are infinite points you could plot on that particular curve, right? So you have to make a choice, which also was a part of your basic economic problem um, in deciding where to produce. And obviously if you're choosing, and this is a this is a pretty major one. So if you're choosing, you would also suffer from opportunity cost, which we discussed in an earlier video. Uh, this is kind of a little more important, so I'll draw the diagram for this. Um, so for opportunity cost, if you just quickly draw a very rough diagram, so you have y, you have x. I mean, good y, good x. I'm just too lazy to write it place it properly. Um, and you have your PPC. Let's say the economy was producing on point A before, and now the economy decides to produce at point B. So they made this choice uh, to move from A to B, right? Once they make, and they want to find out what's the opportunity cost of this choice. So if you really look at it, at A, they could have Y output with X output. Uh, at B, Y output decreased to Y1 for an increase of X output to X, you know, X to X1, right? So to achieve an increase in output from X to X1, you had to give this, give this much amount, you know, of Y output up, uh, up. you had to forego it. So the way it links to opportunity cost so that A and B are two alternatives, you chose alternative B rather than alternative A, you got more of X. However, the costs, the what you had to forego, what you had to do without, uh, ha was, the, was the amount of uh, or 
output of y that you just basically left that decreased because of an increase in x so the downward slope rather is what's important here so the opportunity cost is basically shown um, in this particular case by the downward slope because the downward slope indicates that you know you can only produce more of x by giving up or foregoing uh, output of y and that's basically what shows opportunity cost um, you know we've shown it through uh, through a movement along the curve and that is something that is tested quite a bit especially in your mcqs they really do like to ask uh, you know what is the opportunity cost to move from this to this and they'll give you options that's a clear, and so so on so on and so forth um another economic concept you can illustrate is international trade um basically if you're operating at a or on a point at a point at a at a point outside the ppc so points outside the PPC, like point F, are unattainable if an economy or is operating at uh, or on an unattainable point. My camera just seems to be messed up today. Um, the only explanation is that it's trading with another economy that has a, a much greater potential, that's a, a different PPC that's perhaps outward, right? Uh, more outward. So if you look here, like. Uh, if you're trading with an economy which has a PPC somewhere here, then yes, then you might be able to produce, to, to consume rather point F because you might be able to produce a certain amount of Y. If we say you can produce this amount of Y, however, for this amount of Y as shown by the PPC, you can only produce, let's say this amount of X, right? However, for this unattainable point, you want this amount of X. So the difference you just import, correct? So in through international trade, you can actually operate on points outside the PPC, and the list for this, you know, showing economic concepts to just go on. Uh, these are just a few of the main ones. Um, the second thing I want to cover, uh, I'll just erase this, um, is the difference between, um, well. The difference between a straight line and what I've drawn, um, but rather the difference between actual growth and potential growth. So actual growth we have here and potential growth. And let's look at this. So actual growth is you, you know your uh, movement or yeah, it's your movement of actual point, which is your point inside the PPC, actual point, the point in which you're, uh, upon which your economy was actually operating. Like your economy may be able to produce 100 of good X and 100 of good Y. Uh, in reality, the actual point, what is actually doing that 50 of good X, 50 of good, I, good Y, maybe that's what we're going to call the actual point. So if it moves, uh, um, closer to the PPC that is that indicates actual growth and how would we show this uh, graphically we can take black so suppose you have your PPC you have Y you have X and you have let's say your actual point your initial actual point was a and now the idea is it is moving anywhere, anywhere closer to the your PPC, and the way you could achieve this, um, if we continue in red, is basically um, the factors, or not not really factors, but how you can achieve this, how you can start to achieve some sort of actual growth by moving closer to the frontier of the PPC, is just better utilization utilization of existing resources and technology right so the frontier shows the given set of resources and technology the the amount the possibilities that you could that you can produce with the given set of resources and technology um, 
and the idea is that if you're producing inside it you're not being 100 percent efficient so now you're just being more efficient by utilizing all of these resources uh, of this amount of your resource resources of the, and technology um so there's less wastage of resources right so for example if unemployment rates because labor is a resource is a factor of production if unemployment goes down we can say you have achieved some sort of actual growth because you probably would have moved a little closer to the ppc um, set this virus. Anyhow, so let's look at potential growth, which is something we should be more interested in. Um, so potential growth here, if we, uh, what we're talking about is shifting the PPC. So here, if it's an outward, outward shift, that's increase in potential. If it's inwards, that's a decrease in potential. Um, so increases in potential basically mean that now uh, your the given set uh, so the, the amount of resources and technology you had that has increased and hence previously previous points that could be that might have been unattainable are now an are now are now well, there is a possibility that they could be attainable right so Basically, the productive potential of your economy has been increased. You can possibly achieve or produce more, right? Uh, that doesn't in any way mean that you're actually going to be producing more. For that, you need to look at your actual growth. However, potential growth just indicates it shows what you potentially or what you possibly could do, right? So if you look here, if you just take, let's call this PPC um, AA and an outward shift. Let's call this BB. So A, so AA to BB shows uh, an increase in the productive potential. And if it goes inwards, obviously shows a decrease in the productive potential of the economy or the firm, whatever. Um, so what's more important for this is uh, the factors that cause shifts. So if you look at the factors that cause such shifts, so for increase, um, so the first thing right off the bat is technological advancement because that increases the given set of technology, right? Uh, with regards to resources, so capital stock uh, increase, if your capital stock increases where capital helps you produce helps you build something that helps you uh, helps you in the production process uh, you can now because you have more capital produce more of both good x and good y and hence your potential increases um, another thing is immigration so uh, immigration would increase the amount of labor of the labor it would increase the labor force and labor is a factor input so it increases your potential because now that you have more people you could potentially uh, produce more i'm not saying you actually would be producing more maybe you have immigrants that don't really do much right uh that like you may have refugees for example that might not be as educated let's take that hypothetical example so in that case your actual might not grow you might in fact have more wastage of resources but potentially you could produce more so hence it would increase um right and another would be so discovery of new natural resources. Um, so the, I, I'm not saying if you have already had those resources and you there's better utilization, that is actual growth. But if you discover new, uh, uh, new resources then that would shift your PPC outwards. So if it's, for example, if Pakistan, um, found out that oh we have a lot of oil and then base our PPC will basically shift out uh, 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 you know outward whether we'd actually um, extract that oil properly and all that would be a, the case for actual growth. So if you look at decrease, um, so the so like one, two of them are just to reverse. So if you have emigration, people going out uh, out of the country, your labor force is decreasing, potential is decreasing. Um, so if you have depletion of natural resources, 
uh, it's particularly important in the case of non-renewable resources, right? So if you're just using up all of the coal, all of the oil, your potential to produce is going to go down. Uh, a few more things that at times they put in MCQs. So natural disasters do <clears throat> decrease your potential like earthquakes, um, stuff like that. And depletion, oh, sorry, not depletion, I've already covered that. And, you know, wars, stuff like that, all of those reduce or uh, decrease your potential and basically shift the TPC inwards. Um, there are a lot of different shifts included in the syllabus that they at times given the MCUs, but this is really the major stuff. There's just one more thing I want to cover for this particular video. Let's just save this and go to a fresh slide. Um, and here we're going to be really looking at the slopes of the PPC. Um, so let's look, let's call this shapes of PPC. So one of the shapes that you do have the most common one is the one that's bored outwards. Um, I draw, I'm just talking about the conventional one and this is the one you'll be going to see most of the time. Right, bored outwards. Why is this and what does this indicate? If, if a PPC has uh, the shape is bored outwards, it indicates there is increasing opportunity cost. So the idea here is that as you move from, let's say, point A to point B, Obviously, because it's downward sloping, you would have opportunity cost because you'd have to decrease Y to increase X. What we're saying, because it's bored outwards, if you look at the gradient, uh, you'd have to decrease more of Y to gain less of X. So if you decreased Y by, like, let's say, 10%, um, you'd have to increase X by, uh, you, the increase in X you get, you, you get is, let's say, 7%. This, this is arbitrary example uh, values for the purpose of an example. But the idea is, it says it's incre increasing opportunity cost. As you keep decreasing Y to increase X, uh, obviously decrease in Y would increase X, but you would have to give up far more of Y to get pro not a, a proportionate amount of X. So, you know, so you were giving up 10% of Y to get 7% of X. The next 10% of Y you give up, you get 4% of X. The next 10% of Y you give up, you get like 2% of X, something along those lines. The reason for this is a factor in mobility. Uh, we're not going to go really into uh, de too deep in that. So, but the idea of factor in mobility uh, is linked with switchability, how they can't switch between either different professions or let's geographical immobility and where different regions say, or say factors of protection can't switch that easily, particularly labor. So the idea here is that, um, for example, good Y was, let's say, steel and good X was economics notes. So if you take steel workers, and you put the, tell them to start making economics notes. I'm not saying they won't be able to make something or the sort, but you'd have to you have to take ten you 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 have to take ten steel workers and you put them to make economics notes. They'd only be able to produce maybe one decent pamphlet, while the amount of of steel that goes down the that what they had been initially uh, producing that would be much greater. So because people normally specialize and uh, are good at what they do. And because they're immobile that way, as you switch, so the cost is greater. The opportunity cost is greater. Um, the second that we have, and the, 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 the first is the most important to knowing why it's, it's the shape is such, is the is really what's important. The second and third, just, you just should know them. It's not really, you're not going to spend, spend a lot of time on this. So this is the linear PPC. And as the name suggests, it's just pretty straight. I mean, it's like literally... Um, straightforward, like straight, right? So here, what you have, you have, I'm not saying you don't have opportunity costs, you just have constant opportunity costs. And the reason for that is mobile, um, let's say resources or factors of production. Right, the last one is a little tricky though. It doesn't come that much, um, maybe a few times in the MCQ. So the third one, uh, is the one that's bored inwards. 
uh, board inwards. This was increasing opportunity cost. The next one was constant. So this is decreasing opportunity costs. And we'll get to the reasoning in just a bit. Let me just show you what it looks like. So you have whatever you have on your X and Y axis, something along, along these lines. So the idea here is that giving up less of one thing would give you more of the other. So it, here it was that you give up, give up 10%, you only got seven. Here you give up 10%, you get 10%. Here, if you, if you give up like, let's say uh, 5%, you'd probably get 7%. So it's decreasing opportunity cost. So you give up more of five, you give up five more percent, you'd get like 10, uh, seven, not seven, maybe 9% increase. Um, so the reason, there are a few reasons, I won't write them down because it's not very important, um, but there are a few reasons like why this happens, like why this could happen. One is uh, if you would start to achieve economies of scale in one product. So as you keep producing, switching, trying to switch resources to let's say product X and try to produce more of it, um, maybe you you achieve such large scale output that you benefit from what is what are known uh, what can be called economies of scale, um, where which is basically the idea that if you're producing larger scale, uh, your average cost goes down, so and hence it's more easier for you to produce more uh, for the same amount of resources, um, right? So that's one thing that could happen. The second thing is that uh, the initial allocation of resources was done in such a way that uh, or the resources were were had this nature that they might you know be uh, you might they might be specialists or they might uh, have this tendency to specialize in good x for example and might not be too good at good y if that's the case then as you move from y to x that's really where you're putting those resources available to their best to their optimal use so if you if you had 10 physics teachers as your resource as, uh, and you call them, you're calling them your, those resources and you put five of them to make physics, uh, to let make economics notes. That's Y and you put five of them to make uh, physics notes. That's X. Obviously, as you start moving one person from Y to X and producing more of X, you, 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 the, the, the one person, the decrease in Y would be less because that one person wasn't producing much in Y anyways. As you move him to X because he's a specialist at X because he specializes in X, uh, you move him here, he'll produce more here. So hence, uh, you have to give up less of one thing for more of the other. Um, but care like if, as long as you understand the first one really nice, you really should be good for PPC, and that's basically it for your PPC.